Is it it's time? Good. <laughs> yeah. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Intro. <laughs> is here I, sh I wanted to save her for a surprise wait a minute let me do this okay hello everybody Lori Lori in the house <laughs> hello Lord let me bring Lori over so we can see Lori hello Lori <laughs> how you doing good to see you here Norm's Lori is here okay good to see you Lori let me see his there uh, Ellen, hello, Ellen. Welcome. Okay, I I gotta move this because I'm like okay. Ellen, how you doing? <laughs> Welcome to Wumble We Made It Saturday night, and we got Wheezy. Hello, Wheezy. Good evening, every Shirley Reed. Good evening, Shirley. Okay, <clears throat> and we have Love for Coffee Adventures. Hi, you do the best in describing your videos too. By the way. Thank you. I'm loving to hear that. Okay. Thank you all so much for being here this uh, Saturday evening. Oh, we almost forgot Loretta. How could I forget Loretta from South Carolina? Hello, Loretta. Welcome all the way from South Carolina. And let's see, who is this right here? Uh, Ellen says, I'm doing great. Thank you. Good to hear that. And... He'll, he will, okay, welcome, I don't know, I don't, I'm not understanding, it takes me a little while, but welcome to uh, the Saturday Night Live, Melanie, hi Melanie, welcome, and here's Sue, Sue Gaines, hello, and she says she hopes everyone is well, thank you, we are doing pretty good so far, and here's Grace, Thank you for the love, Grace. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Okay, we'll get back to comments in a little while. I uh, um, We have a very short share tonight. And then I want to answer some questions that I get, two main questions that I get all the time. Actually, it's going to be three. And three questions. And then I'm going to come back to the comments in a little while. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce our amazing, wonderful, special guest that we have this evening. And so, uh, yes, Lori, I see you in the house. Let me see what love is say. I saw love for coffee adventures in my YouTube name, but my real name is Darlene. Okay, so glad to have you here, Darlene. And I love the name Darlene. So I'm glad you're here. And then Lori is... 
Hi, hi, Lori. Yes, I know you are here. Norm's Lori. I haven't seen you in a while. Okay. Uh, and let's see. Hello from Harrisonville, Missouri. Oh my God, is Harrisonville near Springfield? I had the best time. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. I had the best time in my life uh, uh, back in September in Springfield, Missouri. In Springfield, Missouri, downtown at the V Hotel. I just had a good time. I never thought that I would just have a good time in, in Springfield, Missouri, but I did. So welcome. Welcome. Okay. And then, of course, we got Betty Hubbard on tonight. Betty was our guest last week, and we had a real good time with Betty. And so we're going to have a real good time tonight with our guest, Miss Susan. All right. So, and here's another Susie. Hello from Tennessee. Love all your videos. I have learned a lot from you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you for being here, and thank you for being on the channel. Thank you. Let's see. It's about two hours away. Okay, Springfield is about two hours away from you. Yeah, I, I, I think I love Missouri. If it's if it's like Springfield. <laughs> okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to come back to the comments in a little while. I want to welcome you all here. I am so happy that you decided to join me this evening for our live. And um, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a few shares. Some, A few people sent me things to share, and that's what I'm going to take care of right now. So first, we have something from a woman named Phoenix, and she made a beautiful scarf here. And Phoenix is a professional writer as well as a crafter, and I just think her scarf is beautiful. And then, of course, it wouldn't be alive if we didn't have anything from Courtney. So Courtney... Uh, loom knitted this I want to say a bug but I don't think it's a bunny I think I, oh you know what it is it's a butterfly it's a butterfly she loom knitted a butterfly and she's real good at loom knitting animals she just can look at a picture and then she'll she'll do it now this is what this is a picture the picture I'm going to show you next is a picture that Betty Hubbard sent me and when I saw this picture I just got so hungry, okay? This is what Betty had the nerve to send me one day. Are you Ooh. kidding me? <laughs> this is what Betty said one day. I said, Betty, you can't send me that. I'll send me the food. Don't send me a picture of the food. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, and then, of course, there's another one of Betty's cakes and a Betty pie. Betty is busy, y'all. And then Betty, the last thing Betty sent was she's been working on her 10-stitch blanket. And this is where she mm -hmm. is. And I um, I think she sent me another picture today where she was had done a little bit more. But I didn't have time to, to get that picture ready to show you for tonight. But that's Betty's doing her 10-stitch. Her, uh, now... Um, now I'm going to come back to me for just a minute before I get into, all right, so, all right, so now what I want to um, talk about right now, first of all, let me see, okay, we're good, we're good. Oh, let's see, Professor's here, Professor, I have a hard, I still have a hard time calling him Professor Failure, but Professor Failure is in the house, welcome Professor, always a pleasure to see you, and we have seeing Stitches, Creations. Hi, good evening. How are you? I am great. Thank you so much for joining this evening. And then Ellen says, "Better, Betty making me hungry. Yeah, Betty's making everybody hungry. Yeah, we're going to have to watch that. <laughs> okay, now we. I'm going to answer the two questions, three questions that I get the most. One of them is, where do you get a 20 peg loom? And... Here's where you get the 20 peg loom. Uh, the 20 peg loom, they no longer have them on Amazon anywhere. The only two places I know to get them is from Sendwood, Sendwood Looms. Um, that's That was the picture I just showed you before was from, was from Sendwood. I have, uh, 
Okay, so this is mine from Sinwood. And they're beautiful looms, the wooden looms. If you've never tried a wooden loom, I recommend that you do give it a, a try. So this is from Sinwood. And you can pretty much get looms in all sizes from Sinwood. And the other thing I am asked is people want to know where do I get the hook that I use? This is the hook that I use. And these can be found on Amazon. And as you see, they're good. They're only like $9. Or you can get them at the K&B. Um, it's called Authentic Knitting Board, which is the KB brand, the knittingboard.com. Okay, so that those are the hooks that I use. And the other question that I wanted to address is, um, I love it. I love all the comments. I love all the comments uh, that you all send me. And when sometimes you have questions, sometimes you're just saying you enjoy the video. And or sometimes you say, hey, where's part two or something like that. And I enjoy all the comments. I try to at least answer the comments uh, within two days. Sometimes it takes me two. Well, sometimes three. But <laughs> but I always do uh, answer them. Every now and then a comment will get lost in for some reason YouTube puts it in the spam folder. So I'm making a habit of checking that every day, but I lose the comments. But um, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I respond to all the comments and then I'll get a notice, somebody will say, but I sent you a reply to that comment, but you never replied. And I still want to know da, da, da. And so here's what I want to say. Once you comment on the video, I see that comment. I have an app that allows me to see any comments that I haven't answered. Once I answer the comment, the comment disappears because YouTube no longer thinks of it as a new comment. So I don't see it in the new comments. I do get an email that somebody responded, but it is real hard to sort all of those out. So here's what, why I'm saying this is if you comment and I comment back and then you comment back and you want me to comment back, what you have to do is just make a whole new comment or either send me an email because I don't see the replies and that's why I never reply to the replies. I do see the comment, the initial comment, but I don't see the replies. Okay, so make a new comment, even if it's not even the video that you are commenting on, just any new comment that is a brand new comment, I'll see, but a reply to reply, or if you're commenting on somebody else's comment, I don't see those. Okay, so those were the things that I wanted to address. I wanna come over here before we introduce our special guest. I'm gonna go one more time to the comments. Hi, Amber, welcome. And who is this? Let's see. Uh, Kaju, Kaju Reviews. Hi, Kaju, welcome. And then Weezy is saying, Joanne sells them also. Um, are you referring to the, um, you're referring to the hooks, right? Yeah, okay. So she's saying that Joanne sells the hooks. Here in New York, we only have a Michaels and they don't carry a lot of brands that are not their own. But she's saying you can get them at Joanne's. Okay. And uh, let's see. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. She says, hi, I'm blind and I want to try loom knitting. Is there any way you could do a video whoa, blindfolded while doing loom? Thank you. That's a challenge. Ha. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, my goodness. You know what? I'm gonna see if I'm gonna see how that will work out. If there's, you're saying I want to try loom knitting. Is there any way you could do a video blindfolded while doing loom? You know what? I'm gonna try that. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. Oh wow. All right. What a challenge that's going. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do that. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so here we go. Uh, let's see. Um, 
I learned how to loom knit when I was in the hospital years ago for my epilepsy and have been loving doing this in my spare time. I also have a brain injury. I love how I can go to your videos. Thanks. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one of the reasons why I started doing the videos is because when I first wanted to loom knit, I wasn't able to understand it took, I had to go through a lot a lot of videos before I finally put it together and once I finally put it together I said okay I want to make a video that goes really slow and is kind of like the video that I wish I had found I need a video that goes slow and that they repeat a lot and that I can see up close what they're doing so thank you I appreciate that and yes okay so she's saying yes she's talking about the the loop thanks for doing the christmas video it blew up and it's amazing and i did another one and it's doing good okay so professor failure has a channel and i was a guest on a christmas video that he did on his channel professor failure if you want to check him out over there yes professor failure and then so wheezy is in michigan Ooh, is it cold up there? And we have Ron Jacobs. Hello, Wambui, listening and watching over a year now, and your videos have been very helpful, and your energy is contagious. Thank you. Well, thank you, Ron. I appreciate it. I appreciate you being here this evening. We're going to take a few more. Well, there's one more we're going to take right now, and then we're going to bring our special guest on. Good idea, Loom Knitting Blindfolded. Hey, how about that? Yeah, I'm definitely going to do that. Okay. So that's a great suggestion. All right. So right now, without further ado, I'm going to bring on, I'm going to come back to the comments at, uh, either during or after our guest. But I'm going to bring on our guest now. And her name is Susan Spies, Spizak. S yeah. Susan Spizak. <laughs> Susan Spizak. Mm -hmm. And here she is. Okay, I'm going to put you over here. And there is Miss Susan. So say hello to Miss Susan, everybody. And Susan Spizak um, lives in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I am delighted that she is here with us this evening. And I'm going to just, first of all, let her talk. And Susan, just give us a little introduction about yourself. I'm going to come back to the comments in just a little while. Okay, Susan Spizak. Okay, well, hi, everyone. It's great to be here. Thank you, Ambui, for this opportunity. It's been wonderful talking to you, watching you, all of your comments, sing your praises, which are very well deserved. You are a wonderful teacher, and we'll get to that, how you've influenced and helped me in my craft journey. But thank you. Um, a little bit about me. I grew up in a small town of Connorsville, Pennsylvania. And when I usually talk about that, it's close to Pittsburgh. And that's Pittsburgh is actually where I live now. But I grew up in a small, smaller uh, east of Pittsburgh town, Connorsville. And I was born in 1965. And during that time, I lived in a very traditional home. Mom was a homemaker, didn't drive when I was very young. And my dad was a steel mill worker. And so my mom and I would spend a lot of time. I was, oh, I was an only child. So my mom and I would spend a lot of time walking to town. And that was the thing to do as she came from a large family of um, nine children. And uh, we would go visit her mom and they would have coffee and the sisters would be there and what i used to do we would t go to town and i remember going to gc murphy in town as many of you might remember that store and i would ride the little uh horse you know you put the little quarter or nickel in the horse and you could ride the mechanical horse and then um we would have lunch at uh, burns drug and then one of the things i enjoyed we would go and get um, little craft items for me i always chose color forms or color books, paint with water books. I'm sure many of you remember those. And a bag of popcorn and some chocolate stars. That was one of my favorite memories of childhood. And I always enjoyed crafting. Um, back then, like I said, as a child, it was for fun. And I did grow up in an apartment complex. So I had uh, 
friends that we would play school and I always wanted to be the teacher and teach people how to use the craft items and and uh, had fun with that and then I would babysit little kids in the neighborhood and always have little um, play-doh things and and stuff like that because of being an only child I you know, sought out a lot of little friends and we would do crafts together but even then when I was by myself I enjoyed that and then uh, going on into middle school and high school I still enjoyed my crafts. I have an example. I, I um, This is a, a one-year diary that I've kept, and it's actually from 1980. And I, you know, I put it in the camera here. Uh, yeah, filled with all of my, uh, you know, crazy fun that I had in, in ninth grade. And uh, so I've always enjoyed journaling. Um, I was telling Wambui, I like crafting, and I'm not a master at any particular craft. But I do enjoy many crafts and learning many crafts. And it went, um, it was mostly, like I said, for fun or for little gifts for people. Um, you name it, I, I like to try it. Anything from paint by number to the loom knitting, which just recently, you know, in the last year or two has come into my life. Um, but uh, journaling, scrapbooking, you name it, I've done it. Um, then in high school, I still enjoyed crafting, but I went through some um, changes and some tragic events. Um, I lost my best friend to suicide, and that was very, very difficult. We were uh, 16 when he um, took his life, and I remember being very sad about that, and a lot of journaling helped me with that. And this was, you know, I never had the therapy or anything. It was just kind of self um self-help so i would do journaling and about the memories we had and pictures and i still have his picture in my diary and um that was a way that i dealt with that my feelings i always like to write or draw things to express to myself you know to sort of work through my sadness and uh, then i became a mom when i was 18 it was an unexpected uh, event and it was um, very difficult. I had a very difficult pregnancy and being 18, I wasn't sure, um, you know, any what was going on basically. I was very young and it was unplanned. And um, my high school boyfriend, he really wasn't in the picture at that time then after that. So I had to deal with that also and um, among many things, people in my life and such, but crafting also then at that time, you know, I would do latch hook, um, little sewing cards. I didn't grow up with mother or grandmother that did knitting or crocheting. I know a lot of friends I have will say, oh, yeah, my grandma taught me that or my you know, aunt taught me that. Well, I didn't have that. So I still, I had home ec class, but I still don't use the sewing machine. I need to take some more lessons to do that. But everything I do is by hand. And um, so I did uh, do a lot of crafts back then. And then I went on to have children and more children. And I ended up uh, in the end having five children. Um, I have four now. I had a little girl that passed away, which is another very tragic event that I went through. And um, once again, uh, I turned to my crafting things that I would do. I found I could think and I could ex sort of express my feelings on paper. And now I do some online, but back then, you know, it was all just um, writing or reading or drawing, painting, you name it, I did it. And then when I was 27, and I'm going very fast, but I want to fit, you know, everything into a snapshot view. When I was 27, I um, was diagnosed with panic disorder and anxiety and I remember the night it happened and uh, again that I was driving a car and all of a sudden I was dizzy and you know all the symptoms if you're familiar with anxiety and panic disorder uh, came on me I went into the hospital and they kept me into all these tests and um, basically many years later I finally found some medication that works and but all along crafting has helped me and i turn to that anytime that i uh, feel the need to um just be calm it calms me down it it allows me 
to express myself. I love colors. If I show you some of my my crafts, you'll you'll notice I I love the I love rainbows of colors. I'm so frozen here. I, yeah, okay. so I love to use different um, you know media and uh, you know enjoy that. And I also get to make my grandson now. I have a little grandson, and I get to make him some little hats and booties and scarves. So I also have that to share with him. But that's sort of a snapshot from my childhood through adulthood. Well, I'm, and, I'm um, looking at myself and I look like I have frozen. So um, I don't know what's going on here. You're not frozen, just me frozen. I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like uh, frozen. But um, <laughs> anyway, thank you. I think that was a, a beautiful uh, uh, snapshot of your life and how crafting has helped. And because I knew that you were gonna be here, I took this opportunity to, I wanted to bring this on to kind of share with everyone. Now you can't see us. I was trying to make that work where you could see both of us, but you can't. But these are some of the benefits of crafting. So if you're a crafter, you know, uh, these are, do you wanna talk about these, um, Susan? Oh, sure. I mean, yeah, I wish I could get your picture in there. Let me see if I can. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Um, lifting depression, definitely, because sometimes if you, well, at least for me, um, if I allow myself to go to, because I can become depressed very easily um, with some things that, like I said, well, naturally what I've, what I've discussed and I can go to that dark place where I'm just feeling badly and and you know because I mean it's easy to fall into that area where um you know if you find something that you're interested in doing and and you can share that with your friends or with your family uh just like I said making a pair of booties learning to do that just by watching YouTube or actually the hat and scarf that I made my grandson when he was, uh, he's almost two now, but when he was born, I took a pattern from one of your hats, one buoy and scarves and just made it small. And just the idea that, you know, my daughter was just uh, so happy that, you know, to get that, that, that I made it with my, with my loom. And, uh, you know, so that even made me feel good. And, you know, so if you're making things for others or for yourself, that can definitely help you um to keep keeping your brain fit uh i find that's uh true about um journaling especially uh you know new i join i'm not sure how many people are familiar with meetup but it is a social outlet you know you can join different groups and and um i meet friends and um uh people that have the similar interests drawing uh, you know journaling and then we can you know get together for lunch and so you have the social aspect of it as well as the crafting and the using your your mind to you know address things in your life and the person that you are now because i'm very now that i'm 56 i'm definitely at a different place in my life than when i was you know a teenager or in my 30s and all my children were young so i want to um, say something about the um, <laughs> keeping the brain fit because with crafting, you're always trying to figure out uh, stuff. You're always like, mm -hmm. you get stuck. And it's just amazing how you, you, your brain stays young, stays fit, because when you're crafting, you're using your imagination, you're using your brain to figure stuff out. I know uh, just looking at the 10 stitch blanket, <laughs> It's like my brain does gymnastics, but I believe that that's one of the ways that your brain keeps fit is when you're just figuring out a pattern, you're always learning something new, you're trying to figure a new stitch, you get yourself in a corner, so now you got to be creative to figure out how to end this project. <laughs> so and anyway, I wanted to inject that. I'm going to come back to the comments in just a minute, but go ahead, um, uh, Susan. No, I was just going to say absolutely with with the brain fit in fact i i had to laugh when not laughing you know, with, uh, excuse me i'm tongue tied when miss betty showed the 10 stitch that is my next project i will sh just real quick just show this um and this is from watching you on Barry, and right now i ended up buying this <laughs> and i'm working on on the afghan blankets 
and I love your tutorials. I mean, you're just so patient and, and, and I remember watching one where you said that somebody commented about they wanted to go a little faster. And I remember thinking, no, I was almost yelling at the t at my screen. No, one, but we don't go faster. I love the way you <laughs> you're slow <laughs> and you, you repeat because I, I'm a learner from watching. I need to watch your hands. You know, that's the way I learn. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but I also um, have taught for years. I taught special education and I work with um uh, children or ch young adults on the spectrum and adults now that is my job now and I still use a lot of crafting with with my clients and it can be very helpful with um, those on the spectrum and when I was in the classroom I definitely would use you know I, I always taught middle school to high school and I would use you know with special education I would incorporate a lot of craft things so definitely worked with my students and clients as well well, um, so, okay, so do we want to go down? I was just putting some hellos on the screen of people that are saying hello to, have said hello to you. Uh, oh. So well, hello, a lot of Patty. people have been saying hello. Uh, have you considered adapting mosaic crochet? I guess that's to me. I don't know who that's Yeah, because I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know what that is either. I know who knitting. I'm not sure what mosaic crochet is, but it sounds like, something that could be really fancy and beautiful but I don't know exactly what it is but now we have the blindfold loom knitting project and I'm going to have to find out what mosaic crochet <laughs> is and let me see uh so uh, so yeah Weezy had said hello Susan hi Weezy and how are you Vanessa, Hi Vanessa. hello, Su That's hello Susan and everybody is saying wow. hello. I love for coffee. I love coffee too. <laughs> okay. um, you are a very talented teacher on our learning from you. God bless. Thank you. And here is Miss Kim. Uh, these benefits of crafting are what I have experienced too. Loom knitting got me through the pandemic. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, crafting is can be a lifesaver. Lifesaver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna share something. Um, of course, uh, my background, of course, I have a history where I was, uh, as an adult, I was in the mental health system for, for many years. In fact, I was told I was never going to leave the mental health system, but that's another story. I got away, I got away, but I got away and I was able to turn my life around, so to speak. But I was, I was showing this to you earlier and this is something that, okay, this is a keychain. Right. I don't know if anybody can see that. Right. Let me let me go back over here for a minute. Just for a minute. We'll come back over here. Um, but OK. So. This is a, a keychain. Right. Looks simple enough. OK. I made this. It was the late 80s. I made this while I was a patient. In a mental hospital in North Carolina. And I was telling Susan that all it is is flowers pasted on um, a little piece of wood with a chain. But I remember it took me all day to cut these flowers out. That's the state that I was in at that time. It took me all day to cut those flowers out. And I was so nervous about pasting them on this piece of board. And then when it was finished, I was so proud of it that to this day, I still remember that day of making this. And at that moment, it was like one of the best things happening in my life. You know, when your life is so bad <laughs> that cutting out flowers and pasting them on a piece of wood is the best thing you got. It just says a lot about what crafting can do for you when you, you it gives you that sense of accomplishment. And I think that's where we, we were. We were talking about um, I don't know if we had gotten to the provides a satisfaction, but these are just some of the things that that crafting. Did you want to um, comment on any of these other things, uh, Susan? Or um, uh, definitely the increased joy. I have my example. Um, I went met some ladies, and we went to Bob Evans restaurant. If any of you are familiar with it, and we got a room, uh, back room, and we had dinner, and then we made 
jewelry. So okay, I had never let me made see, jewelry. Let me see what you're showing. Okay. So I know it's hard to find a camera, right? <laughs> but you make so you. Oh, that's beautiful. But yeah, one of my favorite colors. I love many, but turquoise. So I. Uh, there it is. Yeah, I know it's so hard to get, uh, find a camera. It's it's always where you think it's not. <laughs> but you in the middle. Yes. <laughs> show it there. Yeah. So, so are there um, any other crafts that you'd like to share with us that you have made? Um, sure, I can do that. Uh, you saw my afghan that's starting. Um, I love to paint. Uh, I go to a little. Um, ceramic shop and I'm a member of a group of women on Facebook we call ourselves the ladybug so I painted a ladybug um, oh okay pot. yeah okay. I know so, it's where you think okay yeah, yeah. yeah. okay <laughs> so so, so that was that, just pure white then, when you got it right yes and yes. then you and did I, all I the love, painting okay I love fairies so I painted a little fairy house. Okay. And um, there you go. Okay. Yeah. 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 So I paint okay. that. And I what I like is that it increased joy to paint it, but also to be with other people. Other, I, you know, people. other women, you know, around the same age. We have, you know, a camaraderie. We can talk about, you know, the days of when our kids the were young days, and when yeah. our you know, the grandchildren and it's just nice, you know, it's, it's a social um, event too for me when I go yes. places and do my crafts. So I like to do them at home, but it does definitely increase. That would be the relaxation. Sometimes, at, you know, I'll be driving and I'll just think, I just want to get home and work on my project, whatever it is. Right. But uh, increased joy is right. definitely friends. I'm going to bring over some more. Let's see this. Hello, everyone from Vanita and love for coffee says i live in upstate new york and was sad this winter so i made scarves for my local senior centers to help them and also made one for local autism foundation i have autism and i like the sensory yarns that is beautiful that's wonderful love love for coffee that is just um a beautiful thing uh some other people have told me that they make the hats for uh the homeless, um, and people that are less fortunate, they are, they make whip up a lot of hats in the winter. Thank you for sharing that um, love for coffee. That's beautiful. And then we have the large loom I call the crazy eight imitates me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> she says. Okay, so someday I'll. It intimidates me. Someday I'll try it. Well, I'm gonna have to be honest with you. I, if I never loom knit, <laughs> I shouldn't say this on the channel. If I never loom knit on the Afghan loom again, it's going to be all right. <laughs> exactly. My favorite, my favorite blanket to loom knit is the 10 stitch blanket. I really enjoy that. So, okay. So mm -hmm. we have, um, how do you connect scarves, blankets to make them larger? There is a video on my channel call how to connect the sections okay it's called um it's called how to yeah there is a video on the channel that addresses that if you um like i said i made an announcement earlier about the comments you can comment on any video if you want to ask me a question and i'll be sure to see the question so if you go to any video and make a new comment ask me this then i'll be able to send you the link when i come back comment back to you okay all right so but but there is one on the channel that shows how to piece the pieces together okay and yeah i love loom knitting and adult coloring both of these activities have kept me from getting bored during the pandemic yes what about this pandemic and she says, I paint ceramic too. Okay, that's what you were showing us with your, yeah. okay. And uh, fun FYI, okay. And Betty is, I don't know which uh, thing she's, but she's saying yes, and she's having a good time about it. <laughs> and Miss Wambudi, I have learned to make hats by watching your videos. Thank you so much. Okay, and so um, 
we're going to start to wrap up. I'm going to turn the floor back over to Miss Susan to have the any final words and um, anything else that she would like to uh, share with us this evening. I think she has shared. Uh, I just have enjoyed her story. And what I, what I love is that we all have a story to tell. We all mm -hmm. have a story to tell. And I, I think it's wonderful when people share their stories because I always feel like there's somebody out there that needed to hear that story. You know, someone needed to hear the story. Someone needed to just a little confirmation that they weren't the only one who was gone or had gone through some stuff. And um, I, I'm happy that we can all rally around the crafting. Okay, that's enough of me talking right now. I do have a uh, quote I'm going to uh, show a little later. But go ahead and um, what what else would you like to share with us and um, with the people who are on any other crafts or... Yeah, let me see. I do just one another. I love fabrics, and this is another thing I like doing. I'll get a, I go to Joanne's and I get remnants because, you know, I just like to cut them up. So here's my oh. recent remnant. Oh, I like that. And like I told you, I love colors, and then I end up piecing them together. So kind of like, like a blanket. Crazy I mean, kind of like a quilt. Do a quilt. Or, yeah. Right. right. Yeah. And, and I do it by the end. So. <laughs> I am going to plan to take some sewing classes, but yeah, I mean, to wrap up, um, also just, just a quick note, I've been going through some empty nesting now that my children are all grown and gone. Mm -hmm. And that's also, um, yes, you, you want your children to be successful and go on, but, um, since I don't see them and a lot of my life was spent with them with the children you know, right. and now all of a sudden and, they're gone and now mm -hmm. they're on their own so crafting also leaves that but but Wumbu, you're very right i mean we don't get to our 50s and 60s and beyond without some story and you know um we all have a back history and and we all have good and bad and the bad you know if, if crafting is something you enjoy i encourage anyone to give it a try um, like I said, mine are not uh, perfect in any way. Um, I, you know, like I said, I like to do all kinds of crafts and I make them for myself or to give as gifts or to donate or whatever. Um, but, but I enjoy making them and they- That's the important thing, <laughs> which, which right. reminds not, me of something. I'm not, I'm not, I want, I uh, uh, I'm going to interject <laughs> right here because you reminded me of something. Sometimes I get, um, emails from people and they're saying oh i just can't get this project i don't understand it i i I'm, i just can't make it work it's not working for me and what i i say to them is that then move on because if you're not enjoying it it's not supposed to stress you out it's supposed to bring mm -hmm. joy and relaxation and yeah. it's supposed to be a challenge crafting things are challenging but if you're frustrated and not enjoying it put that aside that's not for you and go on to something mm -hmm. else because if you're not enjoying your crafting which is what you had mentioned you enjoy it then mm -hmm. move on to something that you can um handle a little better or that does bring you more joy or maybe just really simple and that's okay too it doesn't have to be something really challenging it just has to be something that you enjoy okay all right. Exactly. Like I love, I love the loom knitting and the fabrics, but I'll be honest, I liked making my necklace with my friends, but I don't really, I didn't, I came home and I thought about it. It wasn't my favorite thing to do to make mm -hmm. a necklace. Like I just didn't like working with the beads as much as working with the looms. So mm -hmm. you do, I mean, you don't have to, I love my necklace, but it doesn't mean I have to make jewelry all the time. So okay. find whatever works for you. Right. You know, if you love right. to draw, draw, if you love to, you know, you, you will find your, your thing that makes you happy. Like I love going to find remnants of fabric. I just, that's mm -hmm. my, uh, you know, or, or yarn. So yeah, you will find whatever works for you. And I say, go for it and don't look for perfection. Just look for fun and happiness. And at this time exactly. in our lives, you know. Let me, let me bring some more people on and see what they're saying. Uh, 
Miss Norma, Las Vegas. How you doing? She says, I'm sorry I'm late. Hello, family. Well, welcome. You're never too late. <laughs> we love to see you, Miss Norma. Thank you for being here. And Ellen says, I have made so many fingerless gloves by watching your videos. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome. I'm glad that you find the videos helpful. Thank you for sharing your story. That's to you. Um, oh, you're welcome, Miss Susan. Teddy. Thank you. And let's see. And Lindy is saying hello. <laughs> And then she Hi, says, thanks to both of you. Love you both. Thanks for everyone else watching. Uh, P.S. I'm addicted to caffeine. I named my E-trike caffeinator. Oh, there you go. <laughs> caffeinator, <laughs> okay. Coffee and chocolate. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for sharing your story, Susan. You are a beautiful soul. God bless. Um, so, Susan... You, uh, I'm going to give you, well, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do this little quote and then I'm going to let you get, uh, say the last word. And then if there's nothing else, we're going to wrap up. So let me go ahead over here to this quote that we wanted to share. Making things by hand can bring about profound changes in emotions, sensory experiences, actions, behaviors, and patterns of thought, which means that it can effectively alter the way in which a person perceives the world. And I just think that says it all. Okay, so Miss Susan, That's I'm going to give you a last word before we do our outro. I want to thank everybody from, for being here. And um, I'll be back the last Saturday of March at the same time, same channel. <laughs> okay. All right. So a few words from our special guest, and then we'll say a goodbye. Okay. Go ahead, Miss okay. Susan. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone, for the nice comments. I've really enjoyed being here. Uh, thank you, Wambui, for everything you do. I find you so amazing. You, like somebody mentioned in a comment, your energy, your your smile, you're just upbeat. Your teaching is amazing. And I've learned so many different little things from you. And I've enjoyed being here and, you know, continue to watch you and learn. And to anybody, once again, please try if you, you know, feel like it, just find a craft that works for you. And hopefully it brings some life and some amazing colors and um, to to your world. God bless you all. Thank you. That was Susan Spizak. Thank you so much. We'll have you and Miss Betty back one day or anybody else. If anybody is interested in being a guest and sharing your story or just sharing your crafts, then please email me at wambui at wambuimadeit.com. I would love to have you on. I like taking the live into this different direction um, where we share stories and um, just motivate and inspire each other in a, a better way, okay? So thank you. Uh, with that said, let me just see if anybody's over here saying anything. Okay, so I think we had, I think Lydia said hello. I think, um, thanks to both of you, love you both. Okay, yeah, we got the caffeinated. <laughs> the, and she says, thank you for sharing your story, Susan. And we, we, we're now, we're repeating ourselves. Thanks for sharing, ladies. Yeah. And she says, thank you for sharing your story, Susan. Enjoy spending time with my crafty friends. Take care, everyone. And then, thank you, Susan. Happy craft day. I believe that's, I'm going to leave that right there. And so with that said, I love you all. I'll see you on the channel. Uh, okay, so I'm going to just say peace now. Bye-bye, Susan. Thank you so much for being okay. here. Bye-bye. Okay, so thank when you. she says, uh, God bless to all. Happy crafting. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye.